Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Today we're going to be doing our third video of our LVAD series, our left ventricular assist device series. And today we're going to be talking specifically about suction events. What is a suction event? What causes it? How can we evaluate for that cause and what can we do to fix it? It most likely won't be a very long video as this is a pretty focused topic, but it's a common one that we think about and need to think about when caring for our LVAD patients. As a reminder, this is the third video in a series. Uh, if we pull up our whiteboard medicine uh, YouTube page here, this is just the home page. Um, you can see that we've had uh, two other LVAD videos that we just posted yesterday. We'll link those in the video description. This first one here is an introduction to LVAD. It's kind of LVAD basic. So if you are unfamiliar with what an LVAD is, we definitely would recommend you check that video out first as it'll kind of lay that foundation to then better understand these videos. Uh, the second video here is on LVAD alarms or kind of outputs things like flow, power, pulsatility, index, preload sensitive, afterload, uh, preload dependent, afterload sensitive, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we talk about those things in relation to certain pathophysiologic events, things like right heart failure, hypovolemia, hypervolemia, uh, pump obstruction, inflow, outflow obstruction, uh, all that kind of good stuff. So definitely check those videos out. We'll link in the video description. Uh, no further ado, quick 30 second break for the introduction, then we'll dive in. Don't go anywhere. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join Join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving. All right, thanks for sticking around. So suction events with left ventricular assist devices. So a suction event, the idea here is that there's actual suction happening between the LVAD inflow cannula, right? For those of you unfamiliar or less familiar who just need a brush up on things, this is an LVAD, right? LVAD is a surgically implanted left ventricular assist device. This is the heart here, right? You have the right ventricle right atrium. This is the right ventricular outflow track into the pulmonary vasculature. This is the left atrium, left ventricle, the aortic outflow track here that goes into the aortic arch. All right, this is not our graphic. Uh, props to this team here. Um, Sing it all, and we will put this link in the video description. Uh, they should get the credit for the image that they put together. But what an LVAD does is this inflow cannula sucks blood out of the left ventricle. It goes through the inflow cannula into the pump, and this pump then uh, shoots the blood through the outflow cannula into the aorta to then be circulated around the body. So what's happening with a suction event is there's literally suctioning happening with this inflow cannula as it's trying to suck blood. Some of the myo uh, um, uh, I said mitochondrial myocardial tissue actually gets suctioned on to this. As you can imagine, if someone is dependent on, on an LVAD to pump blood around their body, and when they're trying to suck the blood out of the left ventricle to then pump it around their body, a suction event where that pump cannot suck blood in is going to be potentially catastrophic, potentially deadly. This is most common in kind of the first month for uh, when you have your LVAD, because uh, sometimes it takes some fiddling. Uh, as one could imagine, the speed in which the LVAD is sucking the blood out of the left ventricle, the speed is uh, potentially a cause here for suction events. Sometimes you need to decrease the speed, which is why kind of the first month tends to be when you see more suction events as uh, the titration of the LVAD and the heart are kind of becoming adapted to one another. But what we're uh, talking about with suction events here is this is literally the left ventricle collapses, okay? And the septum deviates towards the inflow cannula. To put that in the picture, it's what we just talked about. Here's the left ventricle. It collapses, and the septum, right, the interventricular septum often deviates towards the LVAD inflow cannula, which is sucking the blood out, and causes intermittent transient obstruction. Things that can cause suction events, it's super variable, super diverse. Really, anything that decreases the preload, if this left ventricle is empty and there's less blood in there, it's going to be kind of less expanded, right? Less dilated. And if it is more empty, these walls are, it's gonna be easier for them to kind of come together and lead to a suction event on this inflow cannula. Also, anything that positions the cannula closer to the septum. It's this intraventricular septum that often bows inwards towards the suction cannula and causes these suction events. So if this cannula is kind of directed at an angle more towards 
the septum, that can lead to increased suction events. So kind of cannula positioning and anatomy. Um, so anything that decreases preload or anything that positions the cannula closer to the septum. When we think about what those things are, again, it can be a number of things, really diverse pathology. One, as we just mentioned, is simply inflow cannula position, right? If you just get an LVAD, they just implant it, right? And you're within the first month or so. If that cannula is positioned, you know, closer to the septum or kind of directed towards that septum, um, that can cause an increase in suction events. So inflow cannula position is important. Now, if someone has had their LVAD for months and months and months and they haven't had suction events and all of a sudden start having suction events, you know, that's not going to be inflow cannula position because unless that LVAD's gotten, you know, moved around, which is not likely, um, this is usually something that happens right after implant of the LVAD. Speed changes is another one. As we talked about, the rate in which the LVAD is sucking blood out of the left ventricle is going to contribute to this left ventricle collapsing. Speed is something you have to change, though. We've talked about that in those previous videos. So let's just say someone had a recent increase in their speed, and that led to more suction events. It's probably the increase in speed for which the inflow cannula is sucking blood out of the left ventricle that's leading to the suction event. So sometimes what you need to do is you actually need to then decrease the speed, as we talked about over here. Arrhythmias, particularly ventricular arrhythmias, can cause suction events. This would be kind of a new pathology, right? So inflow cannula, this is kind of something, um, uh, let's say, after implantation, so kind of right away. Right? Speed change is something we do. We change the speed. Um, so these are kind of hints. If it's right after the implant, it could be in flow cannula position. If we have changed the speed and you get suction events, probably the speed change. These, though, are pathological things below this dotted line. Arrhythmia, hypovolemia, GI bleed, RV failure. Right? These are pathologic things. So this is the patient who's had their LVAD for a year. They haven't had any speed changes. They haven't had an issue with suction events. Now they come in with suction events. These are some of the things we have to think about. So an arrhythmia, particularly a ventricular arrhythmia, because what happens is if your ventricles aren't squeezing appropriately, right, the right ventricle is going to be unable to pump blood to the left ventricle, right? The right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs. That blood then returns to the left atrium and goes into the left ventricle. So if you're not able to adequately pump blood from the right side of the heart into the left side of the heart, that's going to decrease the preload in the left side of the heart and lead to increase in suction events. So you'd have to address that arrhythmia. If it's a ventricular arrhythmia, you'd go down the treatment strategy pathway for ventricular arrhythmias. Uh, hypovolemia, this is a big one. You know, a patient comes in, they've been sick, they haven't been eating or drinking, they've been taking, you know, three times the dose of their diuretic, the medicine to help them pee, and they're starting to have suction events, right? Because that hypovolemia is going to decrease the amount of volume in the left ventricle, which then will increase the ability of this left ventricle to collapse as the LVAD sucks blood out of it, which then increases suction events. And obviously, treatment for hypovolemia is give volume. But we have to be careful because not all suction events are from hypovolemia. And some pathologies of suction events giving volume can be detrimental, which we'll talk about. All right. GI bleed is another one. GI bleed causes a relative hypovolemia. Now that hypovolemia is not from fluid, it's from loss of blood. Um, and we know that patients with LVADs have a high risk of GI bleed. We talked about this in the past, right? They are on a blood thinner or anticoagulation. They often have malfunction of their von Willebrand's factor. We talked about this in that first video. Again, check it out, linked in the video description. Um, they sometimes have platelet dysfunction or low platelets, and they're more likely to get AV malformations in their gut, right? AVMs in their gut, just because of how the LVAD doesn't do pulse tile flow the same way the heart does. So they're high risk for GI bleeds. Um, the exact stats in that previous video, but some along the lines of like, you know, over 25% get GI bleeds. And this can cause suction events, right? So if that patient comes in and goes, I've been having dark stools and now I'm having suction events, probably a GI bleed. Another one is RV failure, and this can be a really dangerous one. As we talked about in that previous video, many patients with LVADs end up with a right ventricular dysfunction. And the reason being which we talked about is that LVAD is pulling blood out of the left ventricle, and that pump is then circulating it into the aorta to then be injected into the aorta to pump blood around the body. So all that blood that the LVAD is circulating is going back to the right ventricle, right? Because all the blood from the body, inferior vena cava, IVC, inferior vena cava, superior vena cava, SVC, all that blood from the body dumps into the right atrium and then that goes down into the right ventricle. So this LVAD helps the left ventricle 
because it's decompressing off ventricle. It's sucking blood out of the left ventricle and pumping it into the aorta to be uh, then uh, pumped through the rest of the body. But it is all returning to the right ventricle. So it can somewhat to a degree can kind of quote unquote overload the right ventricle over time and lead to right ventricular dysfunction. And a high percent of patients with LVATs end up with right ventricular dysfunction. How does that lead to suction events though? It's as we discussed. If that right ventricle can't pump blood to the left side of the heart, right? Right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs, it returns to the left atrium, goes into the left ventricle. So if that right ventricle isn't working, then there's not going to be enough left ventricular preload because that right ventricle can't pump the blood to the left ventricle. In addition to this, what happens is the right ventricle starts to kind of dilate, and that dilation pushes that intraventricular septum more towards the left ventricle. This intraventricular septum starts to kind of bow into the left ventricle. And as we talked about suction events, are um, somewhat caused by this intraventricular septum bowing towards the inflow cannula, the LVAD. So if the right ventricle is dilated and if the septum is shifted more towards the left side, that septum is going to be closer to the inflow cannula, the LVAD. Now, right ventricular failure, fluids can make this worse, which is why we have to be very targeted, right? If someone's having suction events, don't just assume it's hypovolemia or GI bleed and then just give them a bunch of fluids and blood. Because if it's RV failure, that will make that worse. This is where we really need to use bedside ultrasound to take a look at things. Bedside ultrasound can look at the right ventricular function. It can look at cannula position. Um, we need these patients on telemetry monitoring to check for arrhythmias. We need to check their hemoglobin and do, if you need to, a rectal exam where you could test that stool for blood. Um, and then bedside ultrasound can also give us a degree of volume assessment by looking at the inferior vena cava. So the summary here is that the management is very pathology dependent. Suction events can be caused by a diverse array of things. The common themes, though, are a change in cannula position, a change in speed, or anything that is going to decrease the left ventricular preload. Okay? These are things to think about and to evaluate for. The timeline for when the patient is having suction events, again, can be revealing. If it's early on, right after they got their LVAD, maybe it's related to cannula position. If it's right after they change the speed of their LVAD, maybe it's related to the speed changes. If neither of those two things are true and they're having new suction events, we have to think about all these pathologies, arrhythmia, hypovolemia, GI bleed, RV failure, among other things, as possible causes of these suction events. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Definitely check out our other videos on LVADs uh, if this is something interesting to you. Uh, and in any case, stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.